I'm a Southerner, first of all. Uh, as you know, I'm a former president of the NAACP in the city of Asheville, North Carolina. And uh, after having an illegal election run on me, uh, my good friend, Kurt D. Lyons, uh, said to me, uh, HK, if you want to do some real civil rights fighting, your whole civil rights life will come full circle if you come out and join our organization, which is the, the Southern Legal Resource Center. And we are a nonprofit civil rights law firm that fights heritage violations against the Christian cross of St. Andrew. And after I read some of the letters from my babies on how they were losing their First Amendment rights at the schoolhouse and how people were using implied immunity to, to stop them from wearing their little Dixie Outfitter t-shirts and anything that depicted the flag, uh, they were told to turn their shirts inside out. Uh, many of them couldn't use the word Confederacy. And a lot of them crying out to help from the Southern Legal Resource Center. And surprisingly for me, a great deal of those babies that were crying out for help were black babies. A young black girl chose me as the person that she wanted to do a black history report on. And, and God bless her school and her teachers uh, who've invited me to Louisiana and hope I get the opportunity to go. And one of the things that this baby said to me was, you, you know, something not right about this. Uh, right down the street here, uh, my grandmama's best friend has got a big, huge uh, flagpole with the Confederate flag flying. And Mr. Edson, I've been reading about you, and I'm so sorry that when you came through here, I didn't get the chance to march with you, but I'd miss a, a certain amount of days in school and had to. And she talked about all her friends and all her black friends. Uh, these children want to know because they see something that's not quite right. It's not quite like these people keep saying that it is. And, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm so very glad that I had the opportunity to, to influence a great deal of them. Uh, of course, many of my babies get in trouble because of the fact they say, well, Mr. Edgerton's carrying the flag. So uh, I have a great deal of faith in the South. I have a great deal of faith in our young generation, even though we say that they don't say yes, sir, no, ma'am, and they've not talked to, to say the Lord's Prayer. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a resolve in Southern people, young and old, there will come a day that that worm will turn and the truth will be known here in the Southland of America about what happened. King Galele, an African king who told James Wilmot, an agent of, of, of the King of England, that if a white man came round there to Africa to buy slaves, he was going to sell them. If he didn't sell them, he was going to kill them. And to go back and tell the king that no amount of money he could send him would induce him to end that slave trade. All you have to do is just say the word slavery, and, and, and it's been a, a situation where Christian white folks have, in the South have held their heads down because the whole institution of slavery has been blamed solely on, on, on Christian white folks in the South and the whole world acts as though it didn't participate and the whole world did participate, and, and especially those Africans. And now children want to know real answers. They want to know why you sit and call their grandfathers all these demonic and evil. They want to know these things. And, 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 and the other thing that they see is they see certain things happening with each other because you know black folks and white folks in the south end of America we've been family in lieu of slavery for a long time and I think one of the very reasons why those men chose this flag even though the most of the southerners felt like that the Yankees should have been the ones who, who, who came up with another flag another battle flag because they they had a great deal of ownership in, 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 in the United States flag uh, just fought a war of, of succession against England and, 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 but when they chose this flag, they chose the flag because of its history. I mean, this flag has been used to fight tyranny uh, I mean, for a long time. In Vietnam, many, many times when, when, when young black men found themselves in a firefight and didn't, lost from the troops and didn't know where they were going, when they saw that flag flying, they knew that there were some Christian Southern black boys or white boys down there, and they knew that they were going to be all right. The Korean conflict. The, the United States flag could not be flown. They wouldn't allow it. But my God, the Christian cross of St. Andrew was flown proudly over American troops. And people don't even know about these things. They, the first thing they want to do is just holler slavery and end all debate. What people don't understand, see what has happened to us as Southerners for so long, we've been dumbed down. Uh, even with the, since Reconstruction, with the, with the advent of the, the building of the Freedmen's Bureau, in 1865, uh, certainly the North knew that it had to come down here and propagandize the South. So it sent its teachers here, it dumbed our children down, they did everything they could do to divide and separate black folks and white folks in the Southland of America. You spent 150 years trying to wonder why are we going through all these problems, why all this hatred? 
Why are things haven't happened? I heard somebody mention the Honorable Ariel Dabney from Prince Edward County, Virginia today. You know, Reverend Dab Dabney sent a letter to General Howard at the Freedom Review in 1865 and told him, like a prophet, don't do these black folks bad. Don't take them around to your prisons and stuff. Maybe we haven't done a good by and by the South. That's what y'all claim. Now you have all the money, all the resources, do good by our black family members. And what did they do? 150 years we've lived in depression, bad rule, because you know, I don't know why some black folks think the northern folks have this great love for them. Those northern folks know history. They know about all those black folks who ran with, with, with white folks around here and fought and died and sniped and killed Yankees. They don't have no love. There's no love for them around here. Here's the thing about it for me, the, the terrible irony of this thing is, is this. If the North did anything, any victory, see, cause for me, for me, the victory didn't come with, with, with Mars Lee over there at Appomattox Courthouse for, the, for those folks. It did not come because they knew that in the hearts of Southern people, even though you might have won the battle on the field because you outnumbered us, you had repeater wipe rifles, you had soldiers of fortune you were bringing in from all over the place. In the hearts and minds of us, that thing still was there the love for the Southland of America. So the only way basically that we could do this thing is to dumb down the people and grab black folks and divide and separate them down in the South. We can't have those black folks around there uh, 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 voting uh, with those with their Southern white family. What was the sense of going to war? We did that. So an orchestrated, and this was, this was very programmed. And people think this is a mistake or it's just something accidentally happened. This was an ongoing uh, uh, Cold War that was instituted by these folks from the North to divide and separate us. Most of these black babies, all of these black babies, they talk about Black History Month. How are you gonna separate Confederate history and Southern history from black folks? But they don't talk about Levi Carnine, uh, Reverend Mike Lee, Holt Collier, John Edgerton. They don't talk about these folks because, I mean, these are black heroes who, 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 who fought very bravely. Reverend Mike Lee said, the bodyguard to the Honorable General Robert A. E. Lee, who built more churches in the North and South Atlanta of America than any other minister that I know of, he told his people, after he educated himself with the money that General Lee had given him, keep your faith in God, buy you some land, get yourself educated, and beyond all else, put your faith and trust in the white man in the South, no other, because he knew what was in the hearts and minds of Southern people. There's a love that exists in the Southland of America between black folks and white folks. It's hard to explain to folks. It's a, hot, a whole lot different. The biggest tragedy of all, the whole world wants to associate the Ku Klux Klan or any hate organization with my flag. These folks talked about Nathan Bedford Forrest. Well, if it don't be for Nathan Bedford Forrest and that original Ku Klux Klan, I'm not talking about what happened after Nathan Bedford Forrest, many of us Southerners, red, yellow, black, and white, would be just like the dinosaur around here in the South of America, extinct. And people don't understand that. They just say Ku Klux Klan, and all of a sudden, they gather these images of my flag and white men standing around beating and hanging and whipping black folks. Wrong, wrong, wrong. What about old man Pooley right around there in Alabama who joined the Ku Klux Klan because his family wanted to vote in the, in, in the, in the election and wanted to vote in the Democratic Party, and Thaddeus Stevens and his boys come down here and, and terrorize them in the fields and beat them. And many times, even with the Ku Klux Klan, Thaddeus Stevens and his boys found out how successful that the Klan was at defending Southern folks, red, yellow, black, and white. So what did they do? They started sending their boys down here and dressing up like the Klan and committed terror in the South. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, Nathan Bethel Forrest understood this thing. He told his men, men, let's just come home. Let's go home and forget about this thing. Out of all his black men that rode with him, he said, every single one of my black men are as good as any soldier that rides with me. And I'll tell you something. From all the accounts of, of, of what you do find, there was not a single man that rode with Nathan Bedford Forrest who looked like me that wouldn't have given his life for Nathan Bedford Forrest. Napoleon Winburn. Here's a man that was captured with, with seven horses, and the Yankees took him and exchanged him for four or five other white men. You know, you, what person would do that? No way. There were many black men who wouldn't even take the loyalty oath. Train cadre of black folks on plantations all across the South Land of America, made all the implements of war, stayed at home, all, provided all the foodstuffs. Uh, many went off to fight in the war, gloriously. In the 77 cities that I marched through when I walked to Texas, there was not one town 
that somebody did not come with a black Confederate hero. I'm not just talking about ordinary folks. I'm talking about heroes. People say slavery and in the, in the, in the, it just ends right there, but you know, it's the biggest trick that ever happened. While slavery, by some white men in the South, and I've heard it, I even heard some, some you know, some very rare recordings that Dr. Southall Freeman did, especially one, one Confederate soldier who said that slavery was a curse on the white people in the South. While slavery might have been a curse on the white folks in the South, it was a blessing for many of us who wear this color. Now some folks will say, well, Uncle Tom, what you talking about? But let me tell you something. When my great-great-grandmama Hattie Edgerton stood on those shores in 1788, on her way to the Honorable T.R. Edgerton family in Relevant County, North Carolina, I'm so glad she didn't get left behind. Those Africans didn't like us then, they don't like us now. The only people that ever showed any love for us, those same white folks in those cotton fields and corn fields that we live, live side by side and call ourselves family. And I'm not here defending the institution of slavery because slavery was bad when Jesus Christ walked the earth. It's part of man's and humanity to the man. It crosses all colors, all religions. But you know, there's something happening here in the South. People think that because they have, have, have attacked us and, and tried basically to commit cultural genocide toward us, uh, telling our babies they can't use the word confederacy. You know, there's a resolve. We, we always talk about how we think these babies are losing their manners and they're losing their southernness. But I'm gonna tell you something. There's a resolve in those children, much like their grandfathers that, that, that we see buried around here. Uh, they want to know, and now they have these things called computers. These babies start pl plugging in these things, and these teachers can't get away with that stuff they used to get away with uh, about, you know, our ancestors were demonic, uh, slavery. When these children get the truth, they're going to demand that whoever's sitting in that White House get right on up and go right on down to the Treasury and return some of that stealing that took place around here. I'll have to tell you about that. Not only are they going to demand that, he, that they bring back some of the stealing to place around here in the South Atlanta of America, these babies are going to demand that somebody that walks down there to that education department, that the United States Department of Education, that they tell the real truth and restore the honor of our Southern family down here. We can't embrace our heritage, our ancestry, because the bottom line is this here. Yankees don't want you to know the truth. If you know the truth, you got to pay back all that stealing. You got a lot of folks got to pack the bags. You got to give back all the honor that you took from black folks and white folks around here in the South Land of America. I am so very, very proud of my heritage and my ancestry. God, in his infinite wisdom, could have sent my grandmama someplace else as a slave. But he sent her to the greatest country. He sent her to the South Land of America. And I sure am so very glad for that. If it hadn't have been for the skill that white folks taught black folks around here, that so-called freedom that we got with the second uh, 13th Amendment, when they just set folks loose and said, now you're free, free to go where to do what? If it hadn't been for that white master said, 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 come in here, sit down, John. They burn out all our property, our money is no good, all the animals are gone, but we family. Let's work together to make this thing survive and work again. And they did, and they did. To find out more, call 1-800-MY-SOUTH or visit us on the web.